Welcome to April. Spring is finally here, kind of. We still got snow on the ground up here, up this far north. Uh, today I'm on Pool 4 of the Mississippi River, and I wanted to talk about specific spots on a river system that I would highly recommend looking for crappie, not just in the early part of the spring, but throughout the entire season, spring, summer, fall, and even winter months. But before we jump into that, huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Two More Cast Tackle Box subscription. You can sign up for your first month for just $1 and receive a pack of these baits. These are the Euro Tackle Fat Assassin. These are great baits to vertical jig, but they're also a great bait to put under a jig and float system. I know it's a lot of you right now, it's April. Most of you are probably spawn fishing. If you're in like Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas area, so you're probably using a jig and bobber setup. This is a great plastic to put on a jig and bobber setup, cast up into the shallows on some spawning crappie. Right now, we got water temps 37 degrees, so we're still in we're still in winter mode this far north. We're gonna, we're gonna call it late winter, early spring. So I'm actually vertically jigging this this setup. I got this on a uh, 1,000 size PC Fun Viper X reel six pound monofilament line and then using the one piece six foot one ACC crappie sticks rod today. Um, I've been fishing all weekend trying to find these crappie. They're really spread out. They're not really tucked to timber. And this is kind of what you find on that late winter, early pre-spawn uh, time frame. A lot of these crappie are gonna be suspended on a hard to soft bottom transition, similar to where you found them in November. Uh, basically the water temps late November, early December you know, upper 30 degree water temps, very similar pattern. Uh, but on these river systems, you wanna focus on the downstream side of these sandbars. Now I'm gonna pull up a map here. I'll kinda of show you spots. I've already marked a bunch of waypoints on. And if you're from this area, you'll probably recognize the map. Don't worry. It's the Mississippi River. These fish swim around. If they get too pressured, uh, they will find another spot. So as you can see, I got couple sandbars stuck out into the Mississippi River here. And on the back side of each one of these sandbars, I have been marking small stumps and pieces of timber, but for the most part, these crappie are only using them as like a transitory spot to kind of hold up temporarily before kind of moving out. Um, yesterday, I caught some crappie. Most of them were schooled up in smaller schools of like less than 10 and they're just roaming the bottom. They're three, four feet off the bottom, um, just kind of casting out a little bit away from the boat, more like pitching away from the boat, letting this thing kind of hit the bottom and then just pop it up a couple feet. And that seemed to be the best bet of trying to catch some of these fish. Uh, but the reason downstream side of these sandbar points are so good uh, throughout the entire season is because typically on a river system in the springtime when it floods, you'll find big pieces of timber float down and they'll get stuck in the backside of these sandbars because that eddy, as the current flows around the point here, that eddy of the current actually pushes the current back into the backside of the sandbar. And if you notice, most of these pieces of brush I've been finding on the backside of the sandbar. So right now, even though these crop are not stacked up on brush piles or any type of timber, they're kind of moving through them. As we get into later spring or, and definitely into the summer and fall patterns, these crappie are gonna start holding to any pieces of timber that you find on the backside of these little points. And if you notice, some of these little sandbars are not that big. It doesn't have to be a huge sandbar like you see on the bottom of the screen here. It can be just a little, little sandbar, just something to create some sort of backside uh, eddy current. This is what I'm looking for on river systems, especially if I've never fished it before, high percentage areas. And so let's talk about like throughout the seasons where these crappie are gonna be. So late spring, or I'm sorry, late winter, early spring, what we're in right now up north with water temps in the 30s, I'm catching a lot of these crappie further out on the points. So 20 feet of water, give or take three or four feet. You know, I've, you can see I kind of trolled back and forth here between these two st stumps. Uh, again, 20 feet of water. As we get into the later part of spring into May, a lot of these crappie are not just gonna push in towards the shore, which will be the west side of the screen, but they're actually gonna push up shallow onto these sandbars if they can find any type of slack current. So in this area where I've been catching them, you can see I was, I was really moving through this area. But what'll happen is these crappie, they'll move from this 18, 20, 22 foot range, 
and they'll slide up come early May, they'll slide up into this less than 10 foot range. And there's a hard point that comes out right here. You can see it in the dark green. This is gonna create a lot of slack water, which crappie love for springtime. I mean, it's, they don't have to worry about their beds getting washed away by any current or anything like that. So they're gonna start stacking up kind of where you see one, two, three foot range. They're gonna start stacking up in there. Oh wow, there's a big tree right there. What is that? So these are the uh, pieces of cover that I am looking for. And if you notice, there's not a ton of fish on this piece of cover right now, but I am gonna throw a waypoint on it. So as I said yesterday filming this, uh, I'm finding these schools, they're kind of isolated schools of no more than 10, kind of bouncing around uh, between smaller pieces of brush, but a lot of them are just open water. Now, you can see the screen on the left. Ooh. Ooh, we just found a pot of them. This is what I mean. So this is a, a piece of cover of some kind. It looks like a tree. But you see these small little specks on the back side of it. They're, they're bait fish, but I'm gonna guess there's some crappie in there. This is the stuff that I'm kind of looking for. They're not gonna hold there forever uh, this time of year, um, but if you can find just a little piece of cover on the back side of one of these points, it can be really, really good. Uh, mostly because a lot of bait fish hold up there and that's what crappie are feeding up right now. They're feeding up on shad. If you notice on the left side of the screen, there's a lot of fish just suspended out over the bottom. Um, typically crappie, what you're looking for again, is more of these specks. They look more like round, rounder ovals. These fish that look more like grains of rice typically aren't crappie. Um, and again, it does depend on how fast you're going. You can see I'm traveling about two miles an hour here on, on my idle. Uh, what I found, if you're looking for crappie, you want more of a circular shape, the panfish species in general, circular shapes, these elongated shapes, those are usually, you know, your big game fish, walleye bass, um, pike, musky, catfish, and then probably a lot of rough fish too, sheephead, suckers, I mean, it's a Mississippi River that I'm on today, so it could be literally anything, but I'm just looking for a little piece of the cover right there, there's another little stick tree thing and there's some fish on the back side of it. Let me pause that for you. I know I'm kind of blurred out here but see on the right there. So on the back side of it there's some bright marks. There's some bigger fish but there's also a little bit of, uh, of those rounder specks or rounder bright marks on the back side of that tree. So I'm guessing there could be a few crappie in there but if I go up further, let me zoom out here. So if you notice on the top part of the screen here, there's a lot of fish just suspended out in the middle of nowhere. Typically, this is kind of what I was finding for crappie, but they'd be more grouped like this. You see that right there? Or even these brighter marks, they're grouped a little bit tighter rather than this, this whole spread out um, grains of rice. Those, that's what I would call them anyway, these grains of rice. Those are probably walleye bass, something else, but these tighter groups that are a little bit smaller, those bright specks right in the middle, sorry, my cursor's going all over the place. There's like three or four of them, five of them right there. Those are kind of what I'm looking for as far as crappie go. Now how you fish them, that can be a little tricky. If you don't have forward facing sonar, and you can't get right on, right on top of them, your best bet is probably to drift through them. Put your jig down there, let it hit the bottom, reel up a couple reels and so you're about three, four feet off the bottom and you're just kind of drifting over the tops of these sandbars to the back side of them. Or you're trolling along the back side of the sandbar. That's probably how I'd fish them if I didn't have any forward facing sonar or electronics at all at the bow of the boat. Um, because again, these fish, they're swimming. They're not locked onto a piece of cover. Um, so it, it can be difficult to uh, to fish for them sometimes. That's why if you can find them on a piece of cover like this, there's a big old tree down there. There's another tree. There might be some fish in there on those branches. Just to get some clarity, that's a tree kind of sitting like this. And then on the left side of it, that's the, sh the shadow is the branches actually sticking up towards the top of the water column. So I'm gonna actually throw a waypoint on that. I don't know if there's a lot of fish on there, but it's always nice to mark it for later in the season. This could be a good summertime spot. So that's gonna wrap it up today. Hopefully you can use some of these tips 
to find crappie on a local river system that you fish uh, throughout all the different seasons. If you guys are down south right now, you're probably getting into the spawning phase. A great lure to have on is that Euro Tackle Fat Assassin under a jig and bobber setup. Um, you can get a pack of those for just $1 if it's your first month signing up to the Two More Cast Tackle Box subscription. Do me a favor, click the top link in the video description, sign up for just one buck, get a pack of those bakes, put them to good use this spring, catch a bunch of crappie, whether it's deeper fishing like I was doing today in that 18 to 20 foot range, or if you're shallow in five, six feet of water, jig and bobber setup works great. If you got any comments or questions on the mapping system, side imaging, anything you saw in this video, you can post it in the comment section below, or you can message me on their Facebook or Instagram. Appreciate you watching. I'm actually gonna run up river and try to target some walleye today before I gotta get out of here. Try to warm up on my way there. I actually had to take a break on the run back because it got a little, little cold. Um, we're still in late winter mode, even though it's April up north. Uh, water temps are in the mid 30s. Air temps are hopefully touching 40 at some point today. But uh, yeah, appreciate you watching. Good luck on the water this season. We'll see you in the next one.